Change is as constant as these tides, but that doesn't mean the intensity and the rate of change that you're dealing with are going to stay the same. They're not. Here in Nova Scotia, where I live, we're moving into hurricane season, and because of climate change, hurricanes are becoming much bigger and much greater in duration. In the same way, the changes that you're dealing with as a leader are growing in scale and frequency. Think about what you've had to deal with for the last five years. The pandemic, working from home, hybrid workplaces, the labor issues caused by the great resignation, the great breakup and quiet quitting, uh, supply chain problems, a recession, so much more. This is not stopping and it is not going away. So how do you as a leader prepare for and navigate change? Well, there's some keys that I'm going to identify in this video. And I'd also like to hear in the comments what's worked for you in recent times. First learned how to work with uncertainty in my first career as a nuclear physicist. And the first thing I learned is you have to admit you cannot control everything. You need to focus on what you need to control and what you can control. Now, what's funny about us as human beings is we tend to obsess on what we can't control. There may be a lot more that you can control than you can't, but what do you focus on? The things you've lost control of. So it can really pay off to start making a list of what is still in your control or influence. Let's take a look at working from home. What can you control? You need to first make sure that your employees have the skills they need to be able to do the job. If not, that's something to work on. If they do, then you work with them to set clear objectives and timelines. And then you hold them accountable for delivery and deal with it when, if it doesn't happen with performance management. You do not micromanage them. You will demotivate them and drive production down. It's the difference between management and leadership. You manage things, you lead people by controlling people systems. You focus on what you can and need to control and move forward with that. What have you found that works in terms of being able to step back from your people and let them do the work that they're capable of doing? Share in the comments below. The next thing that's important in navigating uncertainty is figuring out how big your risk muscle is. How much risk are you able to take? How much uncertainty can you step into trusting yourself and your people to be able to find your way forward? If change is constant, then the only way to move forward is to innovate. And if you are not failing, you're not innovating. The only way to not fail is to keep doing things the way it's always been done and just keep moving the deck chairs on the Titanic. The thing about failure is there is no failure. There's only feedback. If you learn from the failures and move forward, that's critical. One of the best leaders I know uh, was in the Air Force here and he built his career listening to his boss all the way up to when he made colonel. And he would listen to NDHQ, National Defense Headquarters, and they say, don't do this, don't do that, don't do whatever, and go, yes, sir. And then he would turn around and do what he knew was right. And when he got the results, NDHQ was blown away, and they were all over congratulating him. Now, am I suggesting that you go make all sorts of radical, uncontrolled changes? No. The reason Ed was so effective is he built his career that way from when he was early on. He found things that he could push and try and, and create an umbrella for himself and then his people to do that would get the results that he wanted to get to. He supported failure. He enabled them to grow. He enabled himself to grow. And he built his risk muscle as he moved up through his career. How do you find out what your risk muscle is? Take a look back over the last few years. What have you taken chances on to make some new results happen? What haven't you? Where have you played it safe? 
and then start looking at where are some opportunities that you can break away from the way it's always been done to start doing something that you know will work, that you've seen work in other places. That's the opportunity for growth. You know what happens? Each time you do this, you get stronger. Your risk muscle gets stronger. Whether you succeed or you learn and grow, you discover how you can do more that you never dreamed possible. The final thing that I want to touch on as a key way forward for leaders in this uncertainty is transparency. And this comes into play in a number of ways. First of all, in the old world, if you didn't know the answer, you just covered it up, pretended you did. Here in this uncertain world, it's really important to build trust with your people so they feel safe to move forward into this uncertainty themselves. You are the one that's supporting them to try new things, to do things. And if they know that you are also on this journey, but you're supporting them, it makes a huge difference. Sharing your own journey and your insights in navigating this crazy new world of ours can help them build their confidence on their journey. Part of your job as a leader is to model what you want to see in them. These are some of the key pressure points that I've identified that can help you as a leader navigate this uncertain world. Please share in the comments what you've found works for you.